hello everybody and welcome to your next XNA tutorial now this one's gonna be a lot cooler than your first um, keyboard input tutorial because now it is um, the gamepad tutorial or the Xbox 360 controller tutorial now it's there's always something about the controller that just makes things cooler when you can play games with your controller it just adds that amazingness to it just because you can use your controller so right now um, I'm gonna be showing you a tutorial about um, using the gamepad or Xbox 360 controller or whatever right now um, I'm using something called motion joy the gamepad tool and since it's for XNA I set it to Xbox 360 controller emulator in fact I'm using a PS3 controller cuz real in reality I don't like Xbox that much so I have a PS3 but I'm using if, if you look right here I'm using a PS3 controller and I'm I said to Xbox 360 controller emulator and I had to download um, a patch or plugin or something Xbox 360 um, device thing driver or something so that they would recognize it as the Xbox 360 controller there's enough tutorials on the internet for you to search up about it so I won't tell you about it so um, it's enabled set to Xbox 360 controller so now uh, what, this is the same code as last time everything's the same except I put rectangle and I put player 1 and player 2 and you'll see my use for this later uh, so the initialize method is the same load content method is the same and our update method is changed so just like um, our other tutorial normally I, I would declare gamepad um, state pad 1 normally I would declare it um, over out here just like I declared keyboard state right but it doesn't really matter where I declare it I'm declaring it in the update, meth in the update method and I put gamepad state pad 1 is equal to gamepad dot get state now the difference with um, dot, this dot get state is that you have to specify which controller number you want to get the state for because you can't get the state for you can't try and get it from every single controller you have to declare which controller you want so you do player index dot one to control the first controller so um, this is this is another thing too that I meant I forgot to mention in my last tutorial for the key state um, when you do dot get st dot get state oh wait my bad key state equal to keyboard dot get state there's an overload function that also can get player index and that's in case the person has a chat pad and you want them to be able to use a chat pad to do certain things as well then you can declare which player index it is but normally that's if you're making just an Xbox 360 specific game so anyways um, right now we're getting the state of controller number one so I said pad one dot d pad dot write is equal to button state pressed so if the right button is being pressed then we want to move X towards the right and this code is the same code as the last tutorial so I do not need to explain this so basically if I click the d-pad the right button on the d-pad then you move towards the right same with if I press the d-pad left we move towards the left if I press it up you move up and if I press it down you move down towards the screen towards the bottom of the screen simple enough and if you want to see a lot of his functionality you can go on the Microsoft website or you can do pad one and you could see you could check the different buttons if like if you want button um dot a is pressed or oh my laptop's almost dead um, I'm gonna pause this for a second to get my charger okay I'm back so as I was saying that you can use these um you use pad one to check if the actual controller is connected before you even do something with it um thumbsticks oh uh, I guess that would be the analog sticks I believe and you can check if the button is up or 
if the button is down just like you do is key up or is key down but um you could do button state dot pressed also and also the keyboard state I think has um something state dot pressed also I'm not sure if it has it don't quote me on that you can research that but there's it's just showing you that there's different methods of going about different things when it comes to programming there's never one set way to go about something in programming there's always multiple ways to do one thing and it's always good to learn multiple ways because if you get trapped in one way then you can use an alternate method right so that's a real good lesson to learn a real good skill to learn so anyways about the player one and the player two basically I put a rectangle around each of my images as, um, yeah one of these rectangles and we learned about rectangles in tutorial 4 I believe and basically the rectangles around position dot x you have to put the int cast because um, rectangles deal with integers but uh, vectors deal with floats and doubles and stuff so you have to set the cast to int so you put position dot x for the position, position dot y for the position, and for the width is the image, the actual image width, and the image's height. And same for player number two, we do position two dot x, position two dot y, and get the width and the height since it's the same image, right? So another good thing is that we have vibration. Now um, the Xbox 360 controller, the PS3 controller, all those controllers contain vibration. And in certain moments in your game, you might might want your controller to vibrate. Either if you want to create a suspense moment, or when you collide with something, you want it to vibrate. So right now, um, in the in my vectors and rectangles tutorial, tutorial, tutorial number four, I was teaching you about different functions of the rectangles and the vectors. And uh, one of them, I believe, was the intersects method. And if I never showed you this one, well, this is a special method between triangles. So basically, I put player one dot intersects player two. So if the first if the first player rectangle intersects with the player two rectangle, then that means you have a collision. If not, then you don't have a collision. So right here, you see something says gamepad dot set vibration, right? And uh, basically, I'm um, there's there's three properties within um, this method. So you put set vibration. The first one is obvious. Player index one, the controller number you want to vibrate. Um, this is the left motor. Um, you can put a number between zero and one, right? Um, like you put zero point one, zero point two, zero point whatever, whatever between zero and one, and that is um, the left motor is for low frequency motor and the same thing for this side you could put zero, between 0 and 1 and this is for the high frequency motor and if you don't know what that means you could test both of them out with your Xbox 360 controller um, I don't know if you could hear it with my controller but basically you would you can hear a difference and feel a difference in the two different frequencies and you, if you want both of them to go off you can do both you can set both to one so another thing about vibration is that when you turn on the vibration it's a good habit to turn it off also and in your exit um meth oh, when you when you click to exit it you should make another thing to make the vibration stop in the old X and A's it didn't stop by default so if you were to exit the program and not stop the vibration then it will keep on vibrating until you stop it with the program now it has a built-in um, method I believe in the exit um, method in order to stop the vibration but just to be on the safe side you could still do it anyways or to make it um, more compatible with the other X and A's anyways let's continue so basically when the player collides with player number two we want the controller to vibrate and then when it's not come like when it hasn't collided then there's no vibration involved so that's basically it so let me run the controller I mean run the game and I'm gonna be playing my controller so I'm pressing right on the d-pad and when I go to hit the player my controller vibrates and I know you can't hear it, but
but my controller is vibrating when it touches the player right and that is it for the tutorial thanks for watching hope you really enjoyed this and I hope you look forward to the next tutorial so thanks for watching and bye